Hi everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel and you're joining me at Foxhall Junction and today I'm going to be doing a model railway review video and I've bought a new engine and I'm sure you're thinking at this point where is it we can't see it well hang on a second I'll just get it for you and here it is it's the Batman LBSCR H1 Atlantic so sit back and relax and enjoy this review Now this is a model that I've been looking forward to getting since last year when this model first came out. I was in fact supposed to get this model last year when it came out along with the H2 Atlantic which I've already done a review of but because I was buying other models I didn't get around to buying the H1 Atlantic until now and so this week I thought it's time to add the H1 Atlantic to my fleet and so I bought this model from Rails of Sheffield for £159 so I am looking forward to seeing what this model is going to be like. I have seen it in the pictures and it looks superb, but we'll just see how it looks in the flesh. So upon removal of the outer box sleeve, we can see that the model comes in the plastic ice cube packaging that we're all now familiar with. With the plastic packaging removed from the tray of the box, we now have access to the instruction manual which I'm not going to read all the way through this and talk to you about everything about it because it's all the stuff that we've seen before it's all the stuff we're familiar with so I'll put that to one side and I'll put that in my little folder where I keep all my instruction manuals later once we've then removed the outer plastic sleeve we now have access to the accessory bag And so in the bag of optional extras, which is what they are, because you can you can either choose to fit them or not, it's up to you. So in here we have some head code discs. We also have some guard irons and some lamps. We've also got the tender doors there as you can see. And some screw link couplings. So I shall be adding some of these details later on. So you did get quite a lot of accessories and all nicely detailed as well. So the model has been removed from the box and what I will say is that before I get on to talking about the detail this is the second model that I've had. The first model that I had had a few quality control issues with it. On the front splasher there was a bit of gold paint from the lining so whoever painted on the lining they obviously got a bit of the gold paint onto the front wheel splasher. Also there was quite a few white marks embedded into the paint and on this livery they did stick out quite a mile. Also on the other side of the loco on the gold lining it was slightly smudged a bit and on the other side of the one tender there was actually a bit of damage as well which was just underneath the sea on the one tender side. So I sent to Rouse of Sheffield an email and asked for a replacement and I sent it back and this is the replacement I have here. And there's not a single quality control issue on this model anywhere. So thanks to Rouse of Sheffield for helping me out in getting the model replaced and sent to me and getting the replacement back to me quickly. So moving on to the detail, which we do have metal buffers and they're painted a nice silver colour. The buffers themselves are not sprung, but that doesn't really matter because, well, I think with the sprung buffers they're just a gimmick really, because you're only going to really fiddle about with them when you're handling the model. You're never going to mess about with them when the model's running. But there we are. But they're made of metal though, so that's nice. You of course have the NEM coupling there at the front. You've got some nice rivet detail on the front of the buffer beam, as well as the loco's rear number, 39 crisply printed there on the front. You've got separately fitted lamp irons on the running board and also we have the 
separately fitted smoke box door darts as well. Just turn the camera to the side there as you can see. Those smoke box door darts are separately fitted as well as a separately fitted lamp iron and a handrail there and also the smoke box door rim the darts, the handrail and the lamp iron and the hinges have been painted in a nice what's supposed to be a chrome colour and that does look nice and that, that does make the smoke box door stand out that does so I do like that the main thing that draws my attention with this model is definitely the livery this is Batman's second loco model that they've released in the LBSC line Dumber livery and the livery is it really is gorgeous now that you've got the correct shade of colours which match the E4 that was released in this livery when they were first released and the gold lining on this model it's so crisp and beautiful it really is and the paintwork is a very nice even coat with no errors in the paintwork as well so it really is a gorgeous livery, this. And it's one that's very crisp. The cab roof is even painted white, just like that on the E4 in the LBSE line Dumber livery as well. It's a very nice even coat of paint. There's some nice rivet detail on the roof and you've got the whistle there as well. You've also got some separately fitted metal handrails on the model as you can see alongside the boiler and the firebox and you've got some on the sides of the cab as well and they do look nice because they've got that chrome look on them and I do think that these metal handrails with the chrome finish on them it really does give them a bit of bling I think the printing on this model is also very crisp as well you've got the LBSCR coat of arms there on the front wheel splasher or wheel arch You've also got the locomotive's name, La France, crispy printed on the rear wheel arch and the style of the font is correct. And just look at the embossed on that. That really is very nicely done that. You've also got the locomotive's running number, 39, crispy printed on the cab sides. And then you've got LBSC crispy printed on the sides of the tender. We can't leave out the cab interior that's been painted. You've got the handbrake, all this pipe work inside here and the gauges and the dials and the regulator and the lever. It's all there and it's all painted. And I really do love seeing the cab interiors in these models painted. You've also got the inside of the cab interior as well, painted a nice cream colour. You've also got the wooden cab floor as well, which has also been painted, as you can see, and that looks nice. The model also has a removable coal load in the tender. as you can see it is a metal coal load because it is designed to be a weight in the tender but you can still put a real coal load in there you can still scatter your own coal load on top of it so now we come to the running performance for the Batman H1 Atlantic and as you can see straight from the box she's a smooth runner and this is how the model should perform straight from the box no motors burning out, horrible grinding noises or stuttering or jerky movement. It's a very smooth runner. Especially so because we do pay a lot of these we do pay a lot for these models nowadays with the increasing manufacturing costs. So this is how they should run, straight from the box. And isn't she a beauty? So now we come to the loaded test run for the H1 Atlantic and she's pulling some Pullman coaches. 
I've got most of the rank coupled behind her, so there's seven of the coaches behind her. And as you can see here, she can manage them with no problem at all. And she does look grand pulling those Pullman coaches. So what do I think of the Batman H1 Atlantic then? Well there are one or two things that I will like to mention. The first thing is the connection between the tender and the loco. When putting the model on the track do be careful because the 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 socket that the tender connects to, up to the loco can be undone easily. So when you put the model on the track just be just make sure that the loco and the tender are connected. And another thing, I don't know if anyone else has come across this, but when I was running the model around on the light, light engine, the tender derailed on one section of track. I don't understand why. There's nothing wrong with the track. But then, when I had the Pullman coaches coupled up behind her, the tender didn't derail. So, whether that means it, it maybe there needs to be some more weight in the tender. But that's not really a biggie, because this locomotive is going to be pulling trains on the light, it isn't going to be running around the light, light engine. So that's not too much of a big issue really. But aside from those things and having to return the previous model because of them quality control issues, this is a stunning model. I, I would still recommend that you get one of these models. It's now, I mean I'm happy that I've finally been able to add this model to the fleet which is a model I've been wanting to get for ages now and it's an absolute pleasure and joy to be able to own all three of the Atlantics that Batman have produced so far so it'll be interesting to see if Batman make any more Atlantics in the future and I'll definitely be doing some double headers with them and I've also got a triple header with the Atlantics planned in mind so that's something for you guys to watch out for so for the £159 price that I paid for this, or I should say £163 plus the postage and packing, it is definitely worth getting and it is a stunning model. So that brings me on to the end of this review. Thank you for watching it and I hope you've enjoyed my review on the Batman H1 Atlantic. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and Feel free to check out all my other videos on the channel and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Until then, keep safe and take care.